And what's up, everybody? We're back with another episode of the Talking NASCAR podcast. This is episode number 34. We are back with Hitmaster, fresh off of getting Discord Nitro, so we can do that. <laughs> <laughs> do you watch your Baba? <laughs> he has a little shaking room thing, too. Oh my god, that is so funny. Um, indication because he, he couldn't win in his last year. <laughs> and Joe Gibbs, this is what he was doing the entire time. <laughs> um, but yeah, we're here with episode number thirty-four. We're gonna review Talladega. Um, what was a wild weekend at Talladega, as to be expected. Uh, we got some news to talk about as well. Some bigger things that came up just recently. And then, of course, we will, at the end, preview Dover, uh, which is coming up this weekend. So, first off, uh, at the time of recording this, happy birthday, Austin Dillon. It's his birthday today, time of recording this, so. uh, The guy who gave me a signature on my Michigan ticket. Happy, happy birthday. It's it's day. I don't know what I'm not going to do. We're not going to do a full song for him. You Um, only got a ride because of your wife. You mean? His wife is, uh, his wife is, um, Richard Childress's daughter, I think. Granddaughter. He's Richard Childress's grandson. Oh, well, shit. Then I've been reading wrong. (laughs) Oops. That's why he got the ride. Um, anyways, uh, time to talk about Talladega. Oopsie. Let's talk Let's talk about this Xfinity race first. Uh, I don't know if you got to watch any of it. Um, it was a... It was a wild one. Um, I got to watch... I heard. Got to watch a good amount of it. Not the full thing, but a good amount. A lot of wrecks. Um, it was honestly some great racing, um, but a lot of wrecks near the end. Huge flips. We had two massive flips. Um, thankfully, both of those drivers are okay, um, but it was uh, absolutely crazy. Way up until the end, it was a wreck on the last lap. Um, like half, the, More than half the field was wrecked by the end of the race, which you kind of expect for Talladega, but... And the Xfinity race, I mean, they were, it was also really good racing. I mean, they were going back and forth and lots of lead changes, competitiveness. So, um, that was good too. Jeb Burton came out with the win, which was for Talladega standards, not very surprising, but for regular NASCAR standards, very surprising. Um, getting the job done there and locking himself into the Xfinity Jordan race. Anderson's first career, first career owner win. Yep, so he... Congratulations to Jeb Burton, who had a very big failed stint in the Cup Series, but he's finally able to get to victory lane in the Xfinity Series. And it was redemption for... Um, I don't remember what his name was. He was the owner of the cars, and he got involved in that big, fiery Talladega crash last fall. And now he owns... Jordan the, Anderson. Yeah, big redemption for Jordan Anderson. It's one of his cars won their first race back since his fiery crash so um that was a really cool story to see um but otherwise really quite really crazy stuff uh and then the cup race i got to watch another really massive majority about this the racing was a little more mellow than the xfinity race nobody flipped over um but there was still a lot of crazy action that went on throughout the race um Saw Chase Elliott win the first stage. We saw. I forgot who won the second stage. I don't remember. Does not matter though. Um, <laughs> near the end of the race, it got pretty crazy, um, including a huge crash late in the race involving Kyle Larson and Ryan Priest, which has a lot of people talking online because Larson Priest wasn't slowing down and he hit Larson on the passenger side door. And it was a huge hit. Um, Priest's car got a little airborne. You could tell he was like, let's start shaking like this uh, when the when he hits. And um, you could tell he was very shaken up after it. Larson also took a huge hit. 
Um, and it was shown even afterwards, the roll cage actually bent in um, so much because of the impact. And that's what's drawing a lot of the, um, a lot of the talk uh, for, for this. Um, because, you know, the car is not safe. The car is not, you know, Kyle Larson. If it would have happened on the, the driver's side, he would have died. Um, what's going on here? You know, why is it bending like this? All these cars are so, so not safe. A lot of people are, are talking about online. A lot of people are debunking it by saying that um, the driver's side is more reinforced than the passenger side. And the passenger, it was actually good that it absorbed impact um more i don't know if i agree with that it still doesn't seem safe that the roll cage bent all the way in but i mean i don't really want to put that through the tester uh per se uh in a real situation uh but yeah um otherwise it was very more bad more bad luck for ryan priest who was having yet another great race crashed late um and we saw what another wild finish um noah gregson getting turned on the near the end of the race he had was having a good run and then bubba wallace pulling bubba wallace type moves wrecking half the field in the final lap and i actually was gonna get a meme out for bubba wallace but that that'd just be i'll just do that when he wins and uh giving the win to kyle bush who wins at talladega for the first time in 15 years um, which is wild, actually. Um, other good driver, other drivers that had some pretty good runs. Uh, we'll look at it. Chase Elliott. I did not expect Chase Elliott to do that good. Finished 12th. Winning a stage. Uh, let's talk about the fact that we have a, uh, Rick Ware Racing Top 10. Or do we? <clears throat> no, they didn't. They changed it. They changed it. Never mind. Never mind. We got J.J. Gilly finished 11th, though. Todd Gillen got a top 10. Um, how about top, top five finishes for both the Roush cars? Um, in another race that a lot of people thought they should have won, um, Brian Blaney got runner-up. Chase Briscoe had another top five, despite still being recovering from his finger surgery. Eric Jones with a strong top 10 run. Uh, like I said, Ty Dillon even had a top 15, uh, BJ McLeod in the top 20. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Season like crazy today. I don't Bless know you. Thank you. Uh, but some other drivers did not have such great runs. Uh, Ty Gibbs actually was having a great day. He ended up finishing 31st though. Noah Gregson was up front late, finished 32nd. Kyle Larson, 33rd. Um, Austin Dillon finished dead last. Um, Harrison Burton was running up front a little for a little while, finished 36th. Michael McDowell had a horrible day, finishing 35th. And uh, Bubba Wallace, who was leading on the last lap, finished 28th. So, pretty normal stuff. Pr pretty normal Talladega weekend, all things considered. Big Rex, uh, wild finish. We didn't get to see a first-time Cup winner, but we saw well, not really a first, not a first-time Xfinity winner, but a rare Xfinity winner. Um, so, I know a lot of people are talking about this Brian Priest Kyle Larson crash, and it's horrible. But like, we have to be grateful that nothing really bad came from it. Priest and Larson are both okay uh, at the end of the day, so we just have to hope that it doesn't happen again. And we'll be moving on. So, I don't know if you have any lasting thoughts about the weekend. I, don't, I didn't even know if you watched the cup race at all either. So, yeah, I, I watched some of it. Um, I probably watched some of the first, the ending of the first stage, and then, then I had to get back to work. But that was about it. Watched a little bit of the second stage. Yeah, the cup racing, as far as, like, you know, crashes, wasn't as good, I thought. It was a lot of, they were trying to get multiple lanes going, and it just wasn't working out. But it's not really a product of the car. Um, super Speedway racing wasn't really a big issue with the new car, and uh, was shown here. So, um, 
all good things around uh, moving on. So put that on the burner and then some other new stuff. It wasn't a whole lot this week. It was kind of disappointing, but there was some stuff, including uh, DJ Diesel. I don't know if you, I don't know if you know who that is. Uh, apparently, it's, it's Shaq. I, I, DJ Diesel might also be Shaquille O'Neal. Shaq, uh, he's going to be doing a pre-race concert. Probably. He's going to be doing a pre-race concert at Sonoma. Um, so that was why? <laughs> Look, I don't know. Okay, I don't even know who DJ Diesel is. All right. But I mean, I mean, they'll get anybody. Here, I'll look it up to be sure. I don't know, it could be any. I mean, they they get anybody to do these pre race concerts nowadays. Like, who would have thought Three Doors Down would have done in Bristol? Like, how relevant have they been in recent times? I don't know. It just doesn't. It's a little bit out there, I think. But maybe he's a California native. I don't know. Maybe he's a up north California. Um, natives or like West Coast guy or you were correct. It's Shaq. Shaq's a DJ. It, it's legit Shaq. Musician band. Oh, the world's biggest DJ. So it's, it's not the basketball player. It's actually the basketball player. He's a DJ. Oh He's my. a DJ. Holy, holy shit! This is a revelation. I. This guy's has a busy life. He does Papa John's, right? He does Papa John's, right? Yep. Yeah. Papa John's. He does cover the NBA. And then he does fucking a DJ as well. Holy smokes. I feel like they could have gotten him on for something a little bit better than to DJ a Sonoma race. <laughs> uh, True. Maybe not. Maybe not. <laughs> Who knows? He could have did the Michigan race. I'd like to meet Shaq at MIS. That'd be cool. But Oh, um, yeah. I'd definitely want to meet him. All right. Anyway, I'm glad we got that cleared up. Moving on. Uh, we have some throwback paint schemes that were announced this week. Uh, a couple of them. Uh, first off. I love one of them. I love one of them. So one that we should be kind of expected at this point. Uh, the 43... Uh, Legacy Motor Club car Eric Jones will be, um, be doing a throwback paint scheme for Richard Petty. STP is going to sponsor the car um, to run at the Darlington race coming up in that next week? That's next week's race, I think. Or the week after, I don't remember. But it's coming up quick. Um, it's next week after. Okay. Um, but yep. Oh no, wait, never mind. That's not at Darlington. That's at the All Star Race. They're going to run that at the All Star Race, not Darlington. Okay. Yes. All right. Mm. Um, some other paint scheme news. Here's a big one Eric. Eric Step is back in the news. He's getting on a cup car. Um, Out of the Groove is going to be sponsoring the 78 ride at Darlington. Um, for the Mother's Day race. Yeah! Yeah, baby! Um, he did the six car for Brennan Poole last year at Phoenix. And this year now he's on a cup car, so... And that's really cool. The paint scheme looks awesome with the, like, the pinkish colors and the purples and with the Out of the Groove logo. Um, it looks good, so, uh... That'll be exciting um, to see you. Congratulate! That's huge. That's huge for him. Um, from the start, oh yeah, from the stop. You know, big NASCAR fan. Who the... knows? Maybe uh, any Na any NASCAR drivers that want to sponsor the Pringleson and Company. Uh, yeah, we're 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 ready to sign the contract. Most likely be on the, the number nine, please. Call me. <laughs> I'd be happy to get in. Chase Elliott, talks. please. Um, and then the other, the other pain scheme news that just was released today at the time of recording this, uh, Daniel Suarez is going to be running a Ricky Rudd throwback at the Darlington race. It's going to be of, it's going to be a throwback to the days when he was in that 26 car with the Quaker state. Um, 
and it looks really good. Um, not the same sponsor, I don't think, but it's it looks very similar, um, and it looks like it's going to turn out really well on the track, so I can't wait to see that one out there. A um, little bit out there of a throwback. I wouldn't expect Daniel Suarez to do it, but hey, anything can happen, you know? We got Eric on a right. car, and we got Daniel Suarez sponsoring Ricky Rudd's car. We got, and then we got special consistencies like STP sponsoring the 43. Come on. Um, yep. That was pretty cool. Some other new stuff. Let's see. Um, Tony. Okay. Sorry. I know there was one other paint scheme. Oh, there was there? one other paint scheme that's happening at Darlington. Now, okay. I don't know if you remember this. The 50th anniversary car for Jeff Gordon. 50th, Coming back. The 50th anniversary. For the 75th anniversary of NASCAR. The 50th anniversary car. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, let me get it. Because this paint scheme I have somewhere in my room. It may be in a box somewhere, but it's my favorite. Uh, where are you at? Gotta go to Twitter. Because it, po- it got posted on Twitter uh, by William Byron. Hmm. We've been getting a lot of throwback paint schemes being announced recently. Of course, the race is coming up in a couple weeks, so that makes sense. Um, it seems like a lot of the throwback paint schemes are going to be div- uh, about some, some of the. Yeah, I'll just do it like this. Maybe we should bring this back, he says. I can play it. Fucking play. The 24 50th anniversary car that Jeff Gordon drove. It's pretty nice looking. For the 50th anniversary. It's not. It's not really care. The brown is not like. What he usually ran, but it looks nice. Yeah, that's the old version, and this is the newer. I can do it in front of me. Right. All right, it's coming back. Cool. So that's already two paint schemes that I want to get now. Still want to get that Dupont. One from last year. Have you found it online? Now I want to get this. I have it online ready to go. Oh, is it just waiting? So all I need to do is push pay. All I need to do is push pay and I'll be good. Well, let's do it already. What do you think? What are you doing? Nah, I don't really feel like it. Yeah, I'll push... You did just drop a bunch I'll of do money it after for new amiibos, so. But, you know, you got you got to have your priorities. You got to think. First, first, right? first comes the amiibos, then comes diecast, and then you can worry about whatever money you got left later. Okay, but those are like got to be your top priorities. All right. Anyway, that's cool. I didn't know about that one. Um, but yeah, like I said, there's a lot of paint schemes. There's going to be a healthy amount of paint schemes at the throwback race as usual, but I don't think there's going to be as many as there has been in years past, because I think a lot of them, are. All, there's going to be a lot of throwback paint schemes at the All-Star race as well at North Wilkesboro. So, I think they're going to be kind of a little bit more mixed in between. Well, it's still going to be cool. I'm glad that they're going. a lot of teams are going all out for paint schemes for the All-Star race as well. Such an iconic race, so um, that'll be good. Uh, some other news. Tony Bree Breedinger 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 Breedinger. I don't know how you pronounce her last name. She's making her truck <laughs> debut at Kansas. She's gonna run the number one Tricon truck. Um, it'll be her truck series debut. Is this a Haley Deegan again? Uh, you can look her up. I, I mean, I'm just saying, is it a Haley Deegan one again? Because Haley Deegan drove the one before she went into four. So that's uh, like... Uh, I don't think so. I mean... 
I don't know. You can look her up and get your opinion on her. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. I think it's pretty cool that we get another female figure going into uh, the truck series. Yeah, I'd good. rather. I'd rather something like that. You know, get more women into the sports. We had Jennifer Joe at one point. We don't talk about Danica Patrick, but. Well, we don't really talk I mean, about Jennifer Jo Cobb either, but, you know. She's, Jennifer Jo Cobb was actually someone that owned a company and well, more, raced. More reputable than Danica Patrick, for sure, but that doesn't mean she was a good Danica driver. Patrick sucked. Um, oh, this was, the, this was the big news that came out a couple days ago. So, literally, so this is, there must be something against Hendrick Motorsports this year. They just got Chase Elliott back from injury. Um, he's doing good. Now, Alex Bowman is out for three to four weeks. He was in a non-NASCAR race and had a violent flip, and he fractured his vertebrae. So he will be out three to four weeks. Starting Who's next, Kyle Larson? Larson? Well, they're going to get... So then, so guess what? <laughs> Josh Berry's coming back for Dover in the 48 now. Um, so that means Bowman will miss Dover. He'll miss um, Kansas, I think, is the next race after that. And he'll miss Darlington. And he'll probably miss the All-Star race as well. And then he'll probably be back for the 600, is what I assume. If everything goes good with his recovery. And that really sucks because he was having a pretty good season, um, all things considered, having a good run. And this is going to put him in a pretty much a must-win situation to make the playoffs when he really wasn't going to be in that position to begin with. So I thought you already won. Did he? You might have already won. Let me check. Yeah, let's... I thought he won, unless I'm thinking of Kyle Larson. He did not win. Probably think I did win he did not win yet. I feel like okay. he will. Then I'm thinking of him. I feel like he will, but he has not yet. Um, but yeah, that's pretty huge. But yeah, and then probably what's going to happen is Byron's as um, Bowman's going to come back, and then William Byron's going to get injured. And then William Byron is going to come back in like six weeks. And then Kyle Larson's going to be injured. And then we're going to get to the playoffs, and they're all finally going to be healthy. And then. And then somebody else will get freaking injured. Watch, then then uh, Kyle Larson will win the championship. At this point, Josh Berry is about, about to get at least four five, four to five races in an each Hendrick car. Um, and they pretty much will have no choice. But I mean, he's been doing good. He's been doing good. He's been doing think, good when he was in Chase Elliott's car. I think he'll do pretty good at Dover. I don't know. Kansas, he could do okay at as well. Darlington's a kind of a challenging track. I don't see him doing super well there. And I don't think he'll run the all-star race if he ha if Bowman's not back. So um, he won't. He'll get to take that week off. But um, And then if he needs to run the 600, I guess, you know, he'd do all right there. But well, it's another good opportunity for him to show his stuff. The 40 is still a strong ride. Um, and it'll be interesting to see what he can do. But... Um, and then another thing, NASCAR and Sirius XM, they agreed to a multi-year broadcasting extension. So, continue, so expect the Sirius XM to continue to do uh, radio broadcasts of the NASCAR races, as they usually, as they have for a long time. Um, and the only other news piece, like I said, it was kind of a slow news week. Um, Kevin Smith is going to Grand Marshal the Dover race. For going to Rand Marshall the Cup race this weekend and Dover. Um, that was just announced today. So I was going to say, um, Dover did something for Kevin Harvick for his last Dover race. Um, turn four isn't called Dover four anymore. It's called the Harvick four. Ooh, <clears throat> so that'll be the new turn for this last race for Harvick. Oh, yeah, I forgot Dover. Which, what they should do, if they make a new wall and put back the Dover 4, 4 
wall should be given to Kevin Hunter. That'd be cool. I forgot Dover doesn't have its fall date anymore. It only has the spring date now. I, I How did I not remember that? Well, hmm. that's a cool little touch that they're um, doing for him, though. Um, it's kind of weird. Yeah. I like how these tracks are doing... Because, like, I've been watching a lot of Tigers games, Miguel Caprera's final season, and every new ball, every ballpark he's going to, they're get like commemorating, giving something commemorative of him for his retirement. Like, the Orioles gave him a brick for when he hit a ball out of the stadium. Um, the Brewers gave him a cheese head and uh, something else, I don't remember. But, um, and of course, other stadiums are going to do that too. And it's cool to see NASCAR do that for Captain Harvick as well. Um, it's gonna be kind of gonna be interesting to see what MIS does for him when they come to MIS in August. Well, I feel like they're gonna do something because you know last year he won at Michigan. He's won there five which, times. Sadly, sadly, I was there. <laughs> I hated it. Um, <laughs> seeing Karen Harvick go by the fucking start finish line in Michigan made me want to throw up. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but I feel like they're going to do something because, you know, like you said, he's won there five times. I mean, if you, if they don't do something like sucks, I don't even know what Phoenix did since he's the all time leader there. Well, they're going back there. He's that's where his last race total is like taking place. So they're probably going to do something yeah. massive for him there. Um, I don't, I don't think MIS will do, like, a wall in commemorative of him, though. I don't know what they'll do, but... By the way, just FYI, for people that are watching this, right now is the NFL draft. The Lions are on the clock. So if you see me looking that direction... And actually, the pick is in now, but I'm just going to be looking over. So, but continue. That's no, That's all the news that I had for this week, other than, of course, the Dover preview. Um, I have news. Dude. Big news. So, I found out stuff on Corrigan Oil Speedway. It is not getting destroyed, from what I heard. I know a guy that works there, and he said that it that he doesn't know who I heard this from, but there's gonna be it's not gonna get destroyed. What the deal was, the people that bought it from the guy before had three years to get him paid back because, you know, they had a loan going on it. It's been two years, and they haven't came up with the money. And that's why they're selling it. But from what, it's, from what I'm hearing from that guy is that the previous owner is going to own it. And who knows? Maybe they'll go back to Spartan Speedway. But Oh, so they're reverting I mean, back to the original owners. Okay. Well, I guess maybe not yeah. the original owners. That's interesting. Yeah. And then, yeah. it's coming back. Stay here. And also, this was also something I got from Bristol. So, on our way out of Bristol Motor Speedway, I thought to myself, what would be a good memorabilia to pick up? I looked on the ground. And I see this. It's a piece of clay that's been on the track that I picked up. I put in a bag, and that's just to remember me that I got it. That's cool. So it's all like the dirt. Into a dirt race. The, like the dirt they put on the track. Yeah, like it's it's a. Uh, I can find something. Like it's. Rock hard. Nice. So, I mean, I'm going to make sure to keep this safe and sound because this is a good thing that I wanted to get. I thought that was a lug nut but, at first. I was like, how the hell did you get a lug nut? No, it's a piece of... Yeah, that. definitely. When someone when Joey Gano spun out and uh, hit the wall, which made me scream, and then seeing the person behind me fucking cry, which is <laughs> my favorite race car ever. I'm not even joking either. Legit, there was a kid that cried behind me with a Joey Logano shirt on. And I just, I went to my friend, I looked over at him, I'm like, funny. <laughs> Trying not to That's laugh fun. as hard as I could. That reminds me of when we were watching the, we were at Friend of the Night Race, and there was 
a couple of huge Kyle Busch fans behind us, and he um. And when Kyle Busch blew his engine, they just had this look of just they were like dead inside. They're just like we were. La- I was laughing so fucking funny. Cried went nuts. Oh. Ooh, we got a running back from Alabama. Jameer Gibbs from Alabama. They don't need a running back. They need defense. Well, technically, just, just if, uh, you know, if he gets injured or something like that, I mean, Montgomery, if he gets injured, we can add him on there. But that's not next <laughs> When you sent me the, I know. you sent me the picture of the Corgan Oil for sale sign. It looks like it was more for the property outside the track, not the track itself. But maybe, maybe that was maybe that wasn't the case. Hard to tell, but I'm glad. I'm glad we have. I'm glad it's not getting torn down. I'm glad it's not. Uh, glad it's going to be. We're going to be good. So um, destroyed, yeah. I'm happy that's not going to be gonna, destroyed. Are you, you going to try and work there? Now that we know it's not like I, it. I honestly do want to work there. Um, I want to figure out something with the workplace that I work with now. If, you know, whenever it's winter time, I'll work, you know, there. And then whenever they're racing, you know, fix my schedule so that I can work it. Because I love racing. You know, it's been my thing since I was little. So it's like, I love. I would love to work there. It'd be something worth looking into. I think for this season, um, if though, especially if they're only doing like six events, it wouldn't be too strenuous on your other work schedule. So, um, right, definitely would be something I think you should look into. But, um, but that would be that'd be cool. I'm glad. I'm very very glad. Um, <laughs> we, I was at uh, our local game store the other day. Um, and I was looking, I was looking at their, uh, cause I took a game back to sell to them and I took another game back to try and get them to fix it. And they were going to call me back that same day. It's been three days. I haven't heard anything from them yet. So that's a little not good, I guess. Um, anyway. But I was looking at their NASCAR games. They had 07 for like dirt cheap, but I already had that game, so I don't have to worry about that. They had, they had two different copies of Dirt to Daytona, but they were expensive as shit. Um, thought of you though when I mean, Dirt to Daytona was one of the better NASCAR games. There was 06 and 03 as well. I didn't pick any of them up because. Get other things to do. I hope to go back there soon, though. I have to go back to get my game, so maybe I'll get some uh, to get the game that they needed to, to fix. So maybe I'll buy a, a game when I get there if I get like store credit or something from that. Who knows? Um, I think it would be something worth checking out. But I also know you guys might be wondering where the hell are where the hell are my die casts? I haven't gotten a die cast in God knows how long. Probably since Bristol. No, I got some over winter too. Um, I do plan on buying some soon, uh, at least a couple. Um, I haven't really had a lot of motivation. I'm probably going to buy some after my birthday, though, which is coming up soon. So I'll buy some after that and one or two to show off on the podcast. But otherwise, also, something we should look out for when we go to MIS in August. So I watched, I don't know if you know the YouTuber Danny B Talks. I don't know if you know who that is. He's a really. he's a NASCAR YouTuber. Well, he's more of a racing YouTuber in general, but he does NASCAR stuff. This was back in 2021, which was the last time I went to MIS, but for the race. He he went to the race and and I was like he did his, you know, he did a, he vlogged and I was watching part of the vlog. He he found tents. Like they have at Bristol, they found te- he found tents, and I'm like, what, what, where the fuck did you find these? You know what? And you know what? I I think I've seen them before. They're 
they're on the front stretch, second half near turn one, but like way back. Um, so I've mapped that out. I want to go on when we go in August. I want to go check those out. They didn't look like as good as the ones at Bristol. They were mostly more 164 die casts and like shirts and stuff like that. Not as much on the 124 variety side. However, maybe it'll be a little bit different a couple years later. So, but I, I had no clue those existed. I've been going to MIS for, that was his first time there, and he finds the tents. We've I've been going there for 15, 16 years. I've never seen, I've never seen it there, which is fucking crazy, but. Oh, well, I guess that's something to, uh, to look out for in another time. Um, um, yeah, I mean, I really can't think of much else to talk about. Um, um oh, yeah, I do. I do over picks. Yeah, we gotta do our Dover picks. So, I think it's um, who's? Uh, I think it's just Xfinity and Trucks. By the way, my friend decided to pick a poker chip. He picked Kyle Busch on here, and I, he he hates Kyle Busch. Let me tell you. I mean, he wants him to be out of NASCAR for good. Um, and bef- he tried telling me, can I change? And I'm like, no, you can't. <laughs> and he didn't change, and Kyle Busch won. So, and then I called him a couple days ago. I go, like, so, did you regret uh, saying that you wanted to change? He goes, like, no, I still wanted to change. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, but, yep, yeah, just Xfinity and Cup this weekend. Dover, uh, Really hit or, Dover's really a hit or miss track when it comes to racing um, product. The fall race was usually the better of the two. Now we've only got the spring race, um, but it's still it can, like I said, it's hit or miss. You, you see a lot of green flag runs. You see, but you see some big crashes. You see some pretty competitive racing at Dover. So uh, it's really kind of a toss up what we're going to get this weekend. Um, but um, first, our Xfinity predictions. Who do you think we're going? Who do you think is going to win for Xfinity this weekend? Regan Smith. Regan Smith. Ooh. Because I think he can. He's been having bad luck recently, and you know what? Anyone with bad luck, it can change in a dime. I think I'm going to pick Cole Custer, because why the fuck not, uh, to win the race. It's definitely not going to be Jeb Burton again, I'll tell you that. Uh, and all right. And now, for the piece de resistance, are the okay. cup, cup of predictions with the book now. of choice. Sadly, I'm going to have to take one out. Um, and that being Alex Bowman, since he will not be racing. Um, well, you could keep it in. Just keep it for Josh Berry. All right, then. So, let's mix up the hats. All right. My pick will be... Oh, Austin Sendrick, or Austin Spindrick. <laughs> Lol. Um, never know with that. And now, your pick. Huh. Chase, Chase. Briscoe. Huh. That's an interesting. Pretty idea. decent pick, actually, if you think about it. I mean, look at him at Talladega. You know, he... That's Talladega, was, though, you know. Right, but it's hard to come back at Talladega after you wreck. 
He's been doing great, though. Even with the finger issue, he's been doing, like, really with good. Getting <laughs> with yeah. the middle finger issue. Yeah, he broke, he broke the flippy finger. Uh, but he's still, like, gotten top fives. Like, this, that, and that's not a bad pick at all, uh, yeah. to be honest. In fact, I actually forgot a topic thing. We should talk about who's gotten on the 75 Ridge drivers list since the last episode. Um... Drivers include uh, Jeff Burton was announced, uh, Carl Edwards, uh, Dale Jr. was announced today as well. Um, Let me look here. There we go. List of drivers' names so far. No, I don't want to sign up for your newsletter. Shut up. Dale Jr., Jeff Burton, Ron Hornaday Jr., Carl Edwards, Chase Elliott, Denny Hamlin, Ryan Newman, Sterling Marlin, Greg Biffle, Kyle Larson, Randy LaJoy, Mike Stefanik, Casey Kane, Tony Stewart. Uh, those are the ones. You know what we need to do sometime? We need to do a pod, like a vlog podcast of the NASCAR Hall of Fame. I've been saying we need to go to the Hall of Fame in, in Charlotte. We need to go to the race shops. We need to go to the Hall of Fame. Um, or like if Charlotte Roval or Charlotte Motor Speedway have the race the next day, Saturday, we go there, look around, and then the next day, boom, we go to the race. One day. I say this one day. Yeah. We'll do it. Um, here's the original 50 that were on the original list. Bobby Allison, Davey Allison, Buck Baker, Buddy Baker, Jeff Bodine, Neil Bonnet, Red Byron, Jerry Cook, Dale Earnhardt, uh, Ralph Earnhardt, Bill Elliott, Richie Evans, Red Farmer, Tim Flock, A.J. Foyt, Harry Gant, Jeff Gordon, Ray, Ray Hendrick, Jay Ingram, Ernie Irvin, Bobby Isaac, Dale Jarrett, uh, Ned Jarrett, Junior Johnson, Alan Quickie, Terry Labonte, Fred Lorenzen, T Tiny Lund, Mark Martin, uh, Herschel McGriff, Cotton Owens, Marvin Panch, Benny Parsons, David Pearson, Richard Petty, Lee Petty, Tim Richmond, Ricky Rudd, uh, Marshall Teague, Herb Thomas, Curtis Turner, Rusty Wallace, Daryl Waltrip, uh, Joe Weatherly, Bob Wellborn, Rex White, Glenn Wood, Kale Yarborough, Lee Boy, and Leroy Yarborough. So... Uh, those were the original 50 plus the other new additions, which are, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 new additions. So we still have 11, uh, 11 spots uh, left. So we will have only 11 left, and then we will have the full list of 75 uh, greatest drivers at the uh, Darlington race. So that will be uh, really cool. But unless, unless you've got anything else to add in Master, um, go place that order for that Byron diecast. Um, oh, yeah. But otherwise, that was a shorter episode this week. Not a lot of stuff to talk about, but that's okay. Because so that's going to do it for this episode of the Talking NASCAR podcast. Um, we got, if you want to be a guest, we are happy to have you on. Uh, just go join the Pringle Sun and Company Discord server, and we will. Uh, right now, it's actually right now it's actually called the Tire Sun and Company Discord server. I'll talk about this a little bit too. Uh, it's for my final project for my creative thinking class. I chose to do airless tires, and you're thinking, "Oh my gosh, airless tires! You know they're they're already done. Why do you not come up with an original idea? This is a different concept than the Flintstone stone wheels." Okay, I don't know if you've seen uh, airless basketball. You know what I'm talking about? Have you seen that on? Um, let me pull it up. <laughs> Oh, 
Also, good news for the Lions fans. We don't have to deal with Aaron Rodgers anymore. You can finally have your breath of fresh air. Trust me. I've already had that. I've had many. So this is an airless basketball. Right here. And I'm thinking this. I'm thinking that, but it's higher. That was my idea. Um, so I had to do poster board and put that on there. But right now, the I know I know I make a logo called for Tire Sun and Company, and so that's the server logo right now. It's called Tire Sun and Company. It's pretty funny. Um, anyways, though, yep, that's gonna be a short. If you, anyways, want to be a guest, join the server. Uh, request the talk and ask car rule. We'll get you on. I don't know. Hey, master, what's your any any status on you? You had a guest you wanted to bring on. I don't know if you got any status. Yeah, he's just finishing up his uh, computer right now. Okay. Um, he has to put in his GPU. Okay. So, so. hopefully we can get him on soon. Um, yeah. That'd be cool. But we'll always make room for guests. So just got to say so. But, but anyways, that's going to do for this video. Stay tuned for other much more amazing content as always. Until next time, Hitmaster and I will see you guys next week. Goodbye.